think darkness is your ally? You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it. I didn't see the light until I was already a man. By then, it was nothing to me but blinding. The shadows betray you because they belong to me. Welcome back to the Where's Job podcast. This is Memphis X. It is post draft. We are doing the review of the 2020 NBA draft for the Memphis Grizzlies. And I will say it was a good day. As you could tell by the opening of this podcast, we got who I really wanted all season long. Where is Job? Ja? Here is Moran turning on the burgers. Oh my! Wow! What a ridiculous finish from Ja Moran! Where is Job? Ja? Moran. Seven tenths of a second, Ja Morant. Where is Ja? Morant with a running start. Elevate, oh, oh, it ducks. Oh, oh my goodness, oh, Ja Morant. This is Memphis X, host and creator of the Where Is Job podcast. Where Is Job was easily created on Anchor for free. The Anchor platform gave me all the tools to create my podcast using my laptop or even my cell phone. I can record and edit my podcast so it can sound great, and Anchor will take care of distributing it to other platforms like Spotify or Google Podcasts while allowing me to earn money with no minimum audience. So download the Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to start your podcast today. So it is one of my favorite days of the NBA season, draft day. I love everything about draft day. I love the build up to it. I love getting to know the prospects during the season, all that. But 2020, along with how it's been with everything, has been one of the one of those drafts that I really just didn't have any interest in. One, because I knew the Grizzlies weren't going to have a first round pick going into the draft and the draft was kind of weak to start off the season. No real big stars to get into to, you know, even if the Grizzlies didn't have a pick, it was somebody I could, you know, really get into and like, you know, follow some of the prospects, but you know, draft night comes. And if you're a Grizzly fanatic, NBA fanatic, you get excited anyway, because all the new guys coming into the draft and the best thing about it is the ESPN. I like to watch the ESPN uh, coverage because you get to see the players and all their emotions. You get to learn their stories, get to know a lot about them. And it was it was great tonight. I mean, even as you know, I'd rather have it in New York with the crowd booing and all this kind of stuff and all that. But for it, you know, to be doing the Zoom style draft, it was a real good night. And the stories were good. Everything was good. And as you could tell, I'm a little excited because the Grizzlies really had a good day. Um, The draft kind of went as, you know, as expected for the first couple of picks. First, well, first dozen or so picks. The draft kind of went, you know, as expected. Then we had, you know, some hiccups. Um, I think it started with when Phoenix picked Jalen Smith at 10. Things kind of went off the rails, which allowed, you know, and for my opinion, uh, the Spurs and the Kings and the Pelicans to kind of pick up some steals with Devin Vassell, Tyrese Halliburton, and Kira Lewis. Um, then you had Boston take Aaron Neesmith at 14. Cole Anthony went 15 to um, the Magic. Isaiah Stewart. You know, I, I really can't keep up with all the trades. I haven't really locked down all the trades. So I'm just going down, you know the ESPN draft list and seeing, you know, where everybody went. Um, Some of them I know, some of them I don't know uh, their final destination because of the trades. I know um, at 17, Alexei Pokachevsky, he eventually was routed to Oklahoma City. That's one that they kind of predicted. Precious Achua went 20 to Miami. I think that's a good pick. Tyrese Maxey went 21. 
That could be a good pick. I'm not sure. Um, and then you kind of saw the kind of the draft went off his rails, off his rails again right here. Um, you had Zeke Naji go 22 to Denver. Then you had Leandro Balmero go to New York, which is fine. That was a good pick. R.J. Hampton went, which is a good pick. Emmanuel quickly went a little higher than expected. And then Boston took another weird pick in Peyton Pritchard. Then Aduka, Uduka Azabuki went 27 to Utah. Jaden McDaniels went 28. Uh, Malachi Flynn went 29. And then right about the time Malachi Flynn went pick, um, you started getting an inkling that Boston was in talks to trade their pick. And then, boom, Twitter burst out with Memphis has acquired the number 30 pick. And Memphis selected Desmond Bain, the 6'6 shooting guard out of uh, TCU. And for me, he's the best shooter in the draft, bar none. Best shooter in the draft, shoots off movement, shoots off spot-ups, shoots off the dribble. He's just the best shooter, most versatile shooter in the draft. And he can pass, and he tries on defense, and he's physical. So he is like the perfect pick to put next to Ja or to bring off the bench. Now, when you're picking at 30, I don't expect this guy to be the starter long-term, but he's going to be a guy that's going to be in our rotation Five years from now, when I told you guys on the, the podcast before that we needed these guys to start building up our rotation for when John Jaron and Brandon Clark start making their playoff runs, deep playoff runs. We want these guys that are in our rotation and we need to start getting them now. Um, so that that trade was on and then they just, you know, gave the, the very, very, you know, unclear of. Uh, Memphis was giving Boston future picks and, you know, everybody at Memphis has got PTSD from, you know, dealing with Boston. And then they started speculating that we had given away the first round pick that Utah owes us. And, you know, I was really off the rails then, but then the best news happened and it turned out we gave away two future second round picks to acquire the number 30 pick, which makes sense, which makes uh, Zach Kleiman, you know, He's, he's killing the draft again. Um, Desmond Bain should be a perfect fit. Uh, elite shooter uh, to put in our backcourt. Should be a good fit. And he, he's got that same physical bulldog style that Dylan plays with. Uh, you know, he's got, he's got a negative wingspan. You know, he's got the short wingspan like Dylan. But they play so physical. And they, you know, they really get into their opponents that it makes them seem a little bit bigger than they are. And he's, I don't know how his finishing is going to be in the NBA, but we're going to see. But this was, to me, was a very, very, very good pick for Memphis. And I applaud it. And then at 31, the second round started. And, you know, we started getting the inkling um, that some other stuff was going on with Memphis. But we couldn't really get it, you know, couldn't really get it locked in. Tyrell Terry went to Dallas, which was a good pick. And everybody thought that's who the Grizzlies were chasing. But obviously it wasn't. Vernon Carey went 32. Daniel Oturo went 33. And this was just shaping up real good because it was a lot of players that I really wasn't interested in. I wouldn't mind Tyrell Terry, but I prefer Desmond Bain because of the physicality. Tyrell Terry is younger though, 19. So he might have a little bit more upside depending on what you want to do. But we have Ja at point guard. So we don't really need that upside at point guard, you know, long term. 76ers took Theo Maladon, and at this point, people start saying that the Grizzlies were taking Xavier Tillman with the 35th pick, and we didn't even know how the hell we got the 35th pick. Nobody knew, uh, but I was just, you know, once Woj, I think it was Woj was the first to report, report it, that we had taken, you know, Xavier Tillman with the 35th pick, and I was excited, man, because it's like we picked the exact... I, I've been harping all day about how much I wanted Xavier Tillman. You guys know that in my little mock draft, I had him going... Uh, where did I have him going? 10. I had him going 10. And I had... Let's see. I had Desmond Bain going 18. So these are guys that I really, really like more than most people. And for us to get them at 30 and 35, and for it to only cost us... Um, the number 40 pick and 
three more f future second round picks, that is a small price to pay. These guys should be rotation players, should be good locker room guys. They're both physical as hell, smart as hell, good guys. It's going to really add something to our team. And like I said, this this was probably a pitcher. This is, you know, last year we had the picks. And I, I, you know, I can admit I wasn't really big on Brandon Clark because I just did, I really didn't get it with Brandon Clark. But I learned my lesson. And it seems like they're following the same formula of getting mature guys, physical guys, good locker room guys, team players, this whole kind of mold that you're seeing that the typical player that's going to be for the Grizzlies. And it's a big departure from the grit and grind days and what the randomness that was our drafts back, you know, during <clears throat> the Chris Wallace era. The drafts were pretty much very random, in my opinion, uh, you know, other than the affinity for Kansas players and McDonald's All-Americans. So that was it. So to close out the draft night, we started, we picked up uh, our first two-way, and that was Killian Tilly. And Killian Tilly is sort of in the mold of Jonte Porter. He is from, he went to uh, college with uh, Brandon Clark, uh, 6'10 center, elite shooter at center, often injured, not a good rebounder, but he's somebody that should be able to come off the bench. And if you, um, I guess you can kind of think of him like a, a little less athletic Kelly Olenek, a great shooter off the bench, somebody that can spot start for you sometimes, but a guy that really knows how to play. So that was one of our two ways. Our second two way went to Sean McDermott. And this is a guy I had never heard of. So I'm just going to assume that he's Duncan Robinson. That, this is this is the theory I'm going off of. You know, the, the front office has been so good so far that I just decided that I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and I'm going to just name him Duncan Robinson. He's a 6'6 wing player from Butler. He spent four years in school. Uh, he's a career 40% three-point shooter. Shot 82% from the free throw line. Not a big-time scorer, but like I said, he's a two-way. He's probably going to replace John Contra in a two-way, and John Contra is probably going to get a regular contract. Now, there's still some questions to remain because there's a rumor floating around that um, Golden State's going to be looking at Acquiring some wing help with the Clay Thompson injury. Uh, get well soon, Clay Thompson. And it looks like they might be targeting uh, our very own uh, Kyle Anderson w for some wing help. And he would fit in nicely into their uh, traded player exception. And hopefully we can get some of those second round picks that we traded off. Um, some more draft capital for from the uh, Golden State Warriors. And you know that's it. Also, we signed it. We signed um, Jaleel Tripp uh, from Pacific. He was the West Coast Conference Defensive Player of the Year. He's a six-five guard. He can't really shoot. Basically, he's he he he's going to be a work in progress. Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know if he's going to make it, but he's going to be one of those guys that's going to be in training camp. He looks like he's. One of those uh, hard-driving guards. Um, he did average almost nine rebounds a game uh, his his last year in college. I don't know if he went, if he was a senior or not, but he averaged 16 and nine his his last year in college. 1.5 steals, two assists. Uh, looks like he was. I don't know if he was playing point guard earlier because his first year at Pacific he averaged 4.5 assists and his assist numbers kindly went down, you know, as, you know, as he progressed and his scoring went up. So I don't know if he just shot less. His, you know, his turnovers didn't go down much, but his assists did. So he shot 71% from the free throw line. So I don't know really much about him. I saw a few YouTube clips of him. And like I tell you, I never heard of him. He wasn't even on my radar as far as looking up. Um, but However it goes, um, he should be a training camp invite. Haven't heard anything else about anybody else they might invite. Uh, still waiting on what they're going to do with Jonte Porter. I think his his option, his 
contract decision is tomorrow or to later on today, however you want to see it. Uh, they did offer the qualifying offer to DeAnthony Melton and John Conchar. John Conchar. So uh, they have the ability to match any offers that they get. And we're going to see because I don't know. We have a roster crunch coming up already. So they're going to have to move some people around, make some trades and do something. But you're starting to get a feel for uh, the players that they like, the players that they want and the kind of players that are going to be on the Memphis Grizzlies. And this gives you some insight into when we start doing the draft prep for the 2021 class. Where it's going to be a lot of prep on that. We're going to do a lot of previews, a lot of, um, especially during the season while I, as these guys are playing, hopefully we can have some semblance of a college basketball season and we can get a good look at these guys um, for the most part. And then you got the guys that are going to be in the G League show in the G League. Uh, so hopefully we get you know a good look. We don't have anybody in Australia. I don't think there, but there are some significant Euros playing um, that are going to be in the draft next year. So it's going to be an exciting time. We're going to do a lot of draft prep for the 2021 draft because I expect us to have a lottery pick. Where that lottery pick will land is, you know, anyone's guess. And I'm going to say, don't be surprised if we do make the playoffs, especially with Golden State maybe taking a hit. Uh, you know, Chris Stapps Porzingis is out at the beginning of the year. Also, Jaron Jackson and uh, Justice Winslow are going to be out to start the year. Um, it said Justice Winslow should be back early in the season, and they were a little bit more vague on when Jaron would be back. But... So that, that, that's probably going to uh, hurt our win totals early. But, man, you just don't know how good Josh's going to be when he comes back. So I wouldn't put nothing again, nothing behind that, past that guy. He might lead us <laughs> to a 500 record, you know, with the guys that we have on our team, especially with the additional shooting of Bain, uh, the added maturity of Grayson Allen, who, who won't be coming off, you know, uh, inexperienced. He'll be locked and loaded from his good bubble performance. Hopefully, we'll still have the Anthony Melton. We'll have a healthy Tyus Jones. Hopefully, we won't be, you know, Winslow won't miss too much time. And, you know, you, you never can count these guys out because these guys are going to be tough. And I really think Xavier Tillman, one of my favorite players that was in this draft, is going to add a lot to this team off the bench, especially playing with Brandon Clark. And, you know, I don't know, maybe Brandon Clark's going to be starting now. We don't know. We don't know how it's going to go, but it's going to be exciting. Um, training camp starts. I mean, you know, free agency starts in a couple of days. Uh, training camp starts in a few weeks. Season starts in about a month. Um, man, this thing is going to speak, going to wrap up real quick. I'm going to try to keep coming to you with these daily uh, podcasts. Um, if any more news breaks tomorrow or later on today, I might hit that up, but... I doubt if anything significant happens unless we have a trade or something of that nature. But until then, this is Memphis X. This is the Where's Job Podcast. Remember to share this with any Grizzly fans that want a fan's perspective of the team and, you know, wants to keep up with the 2021 draft because that's what we're going to do. Subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off.